London to look at the birthplace of Wilkie Collins and also where he ended up. Well, here we are, where it all started in New Cavendish Street, where Wilkie Collins was born on the 8th of January 1824. And you know what? He never moved within a mile of this place. All his houses were within a mile of this area. And here we are, look, there's the uh, telecom building, and down here is the BBC. This is where it started. If you want to find out more about Wilkie Collins' life, I would suggest you read this book by Peter Ackroyd, Wilkie Collins. It's got some fascinating stuff about this fascinating man. We're here on the train in London, and the thing is, Wilkie Collins really, really liked public transport. And they had what they called the omnibus. And the interesting thing is, they shortened that, and do you know what they called it? The, no, the Wilkie Collins really loved the omnibus, was that he wanted to immerse himself in the actual, and not just the idea. You could just travel around, and they would provide all the magazines and newspapers you wanted to read within London. So you could just sit there all day reading the newspapers. He also liked to scrutinise and watch people, watch how they behaved on public transport. It's sort of probably sneaky. Then at the beginning of 1889, something terrible happened. Wilkie Collins left a dinner party and he was travelling down Knight Knightsbridge in a horse and carriage and all of a sudden it overturned and he was thrown to the ground. There was glass everywhere. He wasn't cut or particularly hurt, but it was the beginning of a terrible year for him and lots of illness to come. Just by the Kettle Green um, Cemetery here, which is Wilkie Collins' last resting On place. On 4th of August 1889, Wilkie Collins suffered a relapse. On the 21st of September, Wilkie Collins scribbled a note to his friend Frank Beer. He said, I am dying, old friend. And he just signed it WC. On Monday, the 23rd of September, Caroline Greaves wrote in her diary, Wilkie died at 10 o'clock. Before his death, Wilkie asked that there should be no black hat bands, plumes of feathers, or black armbands. He didn't want his funeral to be like that. He requested a very plain cross here. And on the front of it, we'll do a close up in a minute, it says, Wilkie Collins, author of The Woman in White, and other novels of the fiction. The funeral party gathered at Wimpole Street in the morning of Friday the 27th of September to accompany the hearse on its journey to Kensal Green Cemetery where we are Charles here now. Charles Dickens Jr and Frank Beard, his longtime friend, stood around this, this plot of land. While Caroline Greaves and her daughter attended the funeral, she was his lifelong mistress. Martha Rudd, his other mistress, didn't attend. She sent a cross of white chrysanthemums and it said, from Mrs Dawson and her family. Caroline Graves tended this grave until she died in 1865. And then the grave was tended by his other mistress, Martha Rudd, but she didn't get to be buried here. But interestingly enough, I see from a little plaque down here that this grave is beautifully maintained by the great-granddaughter of Wilkie Collins, which must have been the great-granddaughter of Martha Rudd.